And so already we're experiencing, of course, uh, the effects that are cascading from Ethiopia and here in the country. Now we have an influx of refugees coming uh, back to the country. We have been discussing about the Ethiopian crisis for a long time. And yes, if we don't really have a prime solution in that country, then also us will bear the burden of actually taking care of these refugees. We know how we've been suffering as a country. We are being saddled with that responsibility over Somalia and their refugee in Kakuma and the Derb camp as well. So we'll go back to uh, Irungu Hilton, uh, who is the executive director of Amnesty International, to tell us, of course, are we prepared as a country so far? <coughs> Did this really come from the left side as well? How will we also move forward? Right, I, think, um, I think it's about two weeks ago we were, we were actually in this um, very um, studio and we talked a bit about the implications of um, the state of emergency in Ethiopia. And our major concern was that um, if left uh, unaddressed and interrupted, it would cause um, a lot of displacement. And I think what we've seen now, regrettably, very regrettably, is really just the consequence of a prolonged um, democratic deficit and an autocratic um, management style by the uh, EPDRF. And I think now what we're seeing essentially is that the, all of those um, people that in the Oromia area and, and um, uh, the central part of uh, Ethiopia are now beginning to move um, across the border. It's not just Kenya, uh, 8,000 people crossed over into Mayale, but I think we need to also think about our colleagues, our, uh, colleagues, our neighbors in um, Uganda, mm -hmm. who also have had an influx of Ethiopians uh, more recently. So I think we need to watch this very carefully. I think our ministry uh, needs to be, Ministry of Foreign Affairs needs to be very um, adept and diplomatically active uh, to ensure that this does not continue. What has worried me most about this case is the stories and uh, testimonies of people who have been killed in mosques, in, ho in their homes, and in, in markets. And really, these places are places of you know, sanctuary and safety, not places of death. And I think that um, is what probably has worried me most about this recent influx into Moyale. All right. So are we experiencing, so to speak, a, a sort of uh, that Ethiopia right now is going through the pangs and travailings of you know, the birth of democracy? right from you know the anclad rule that we've had in that particular uh, country authoritarian uh, dictatorship so is this maybe the rough and the smooth of democracy happening in ethiopia dr Berunga? i think yes we've discussed and uh, <coughs> when you look at the history if if you read a bit about the rebirthing of a nation especially if they're coming out of autocracy dictatorship uh, Ethiopia has seen this coming. The suppression that has been in Ethiopia for many years, I think, is coming uh, to the end. And we, we talked about this and we said, when you look at the or Oromo, the Oromo you see surrounds uh, Addis Ababa. It, it's the biggest uh, community in uh, Ethiopia. And uh, we, I also read that even the fifth district which is the Somali one down near Kenya is also having a few issues so yes I think to some point I want to agree with you that uh, Ethiopians uh, should be ready for an implosion it is starting and you see you, you can beat people up to some stage when they start hitting back it becomes very difficult unfortunately the population that is being hit and being made to run is all over the, the, the city, you know. So the, the impact will be so massive that Ethiopia will not be in, in a position to hide what is happening in that country. And we said here that uh, Kenya must have plans on how they are going to deal with the influx of refugees in this country. We know a bit about the Oromo Liberation Front. We know about the Oromo People's uh, Movement. And they have a lot of linkages with our friends in Masabit and Moyale because it is one community. So the ban, yes, I think Ethiopia, and we had a regional meeting here about two weeks ago on the Horn of Africa security. And some of the things we were discussing was about how is the region prepared to deal with what is happening in Ethiopia. Because the repression will eventually lead to refugees. It will lead to anarchy in that country, and out of anarchy, people will fight, and even some people in the military might run away. 
the population that is being bulldozed will run away from. But they'll come here not because they are coming here to run away. Some of them will come here to prepare to go back and fight for their cause. So I think as a country, we, we, I don't know because I'm not in the means of interior or foreign affairs, but I think it should have been important that Kenya prepares for this implosion so that we are not caught unawares the way the refugees from Somalia call this country and the consequences are what we are seeing in Dadaab and in this country in terms of terrorism mm -hmm. and transnational crime. All right. Yes. And uh, we know uh, that Ethiopia right now is on a state of emergency for the next six months, right? Uh, we don't know if that also will be lifted after six months or, or so. Also, lack of a prime minister as well. We don't know, and we've not been given reasons why Desa Lang resigned as well. So do you think also maybe the political pressure is there? Because now maybe Desa Lang was actually making sure that some of the political uh, uh, prisoners were being freed, people who are starkly the, you know, against the government uh, or the regime of the day because of the dictatorship and authoritarian rule that we have in Ethiopia. Right now, are these the labors? Right now, are these the, tra the travailings? So the, the resignation and also the state of emergency, what is it all about? Um, Ibao, I don't see the current Ethiopian crisis as the beginning of democracy, actually. I see it as the, uh, the beginning of the end of autocracy. Ever since the days of uh, Haile Selassie to uh, Mengistu Haile Mariam, and then after he was overthrown. Really, there's never been a debate in Ethiopia or political space. Yes. It's been essentially a police state. And this is a culmination of many years of autocracy and authoritarianism. Now, in the absence of the prime minister at the moment, or uh, at least uh, the, the state control uh, of power in certain places, a lot of time the opposition tends to suffer. And the, it, it gets kept guarded. Uh, they, it gets repressed. And the Oromo, <coughs> being the largest ethnic group in Ethiopia and having uh, been resistant to the status quo for many years, of course, they're going to get uh, the first flag. Now, Kenya has seen this coming. And we, we were not, uh, we can't pretend we were unaware of the goings on in Ethiopia. This was bound to happen, you know, sooner or later. And what I'm hoping is. Our Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the Interior actually have a more robust approach, both diplomatically with Ethiopia, to make, to make sure that this thing does not overflow, but also to use its influence on the current uh, rulers within at least the Ethiopian circles to try and calm things down. Today, Ethiopia needs help. Uh, they're, tra they're still trying to figure out a direction of where to go from here. They are confused. And that's why they don't have a leader. The party did not have clear uh, succession mechanisms. And any time you have that vacuum and lack of clarity when it comes to succession, you are bound to create this problem. And I think as a country, we should respond a lot more forcefully, a lot more strategically, with, a lot, with informed uh, uh, analysis and uh, uh, you know, purposeful intervention. We just can't sit back because soon, 50 million Oromos are going to flock to Kenya. You know, what are we going to do? We already can't sustain the refugees we have in this country, in Dadaab and Kakuma. So what are we going to do with another million refugees in the country? I think it's time to act. So are we uh, sort of in a pickle as well? Because we know there was a lot of flack from the international community as far as the repatri repatriation of uh, refugees was concerned from Dadaab uh, back to Somalia as well. So in light of this situation, and I don't know what really uh, came out from that particular repatriation if maybe there was, you know, a seeing of uh, eye to eye, especially on that note of repatriation, because there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I should say kafafal, so to speak, from the international community. Yeah, uh, Dibal, I think the, the repatriation of the Somali refugees, the, that idea itself was, uh, well, uh, the actions slowed down, so they focused a lot on those who willingly wanted to go back to Somalia. For the case of Ethiopia, this is something that uh, we should not be surprised um, at what is happening in uh, uh, Ethiopia and the influx of refugees starting to come into Kenya. I think what we should be surprised is that we actually do not have more than 8,000 refugees. We've talked about Ethiopia uh, uh, over and over again in this program. It is classified as one of the fragile states. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, massive repression, uh, a lack of uh, a proper democracy in, in Ethiopia, with the Prime Minister having resigned under unclear circumstances, Dibal, we should be ready uh, to have more refugees in this country. The countries in the regions have failed uh, uh, over and over again from uh, uh, trying to prevent exactly what is happening in Ethiopia. The international community has also failed. The Africa Union is headquartered in Addis Ababa. It has failed to to address the issue of uh, uh, human rights, mm -hmm. democracy in, 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 in Ethiopia. And um, uh, uh, the refugees from Ethiopia will not go to Eritrea. They will not go to Somalia. They will not go to Sudan. They are going to come to Kenya. And they will come to Kenya in millions. And uh, uh, we say it again that if uh, uh, half a million uh, uh, Somali refugees overwhelm the country, what will happen when we have two, three million refugees from Ethiopia? And, and therefore, the issue of conflict prevention is something that I believe the international community the, local, the, 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 the regional organizations, the sub-regional organizations like IGAD uh, uh, have tried but have not put a maximum efforts in a bit to prevent such kind of conflicts from happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Finally from uh, Naomi Damba. Dubal, uh, my colleagues have stated very clearly uh, that this is not surprising. Uh, you know, it's been coming and coming for a while. The most important thing for us to do uh, is really what uh, most of uh, alluded to. And that is we need to organize the country to manage mm -hmm. this situation. We cannot have over one million people marching over into the country and orderly. You know, so we need to have a framework. We need to have a, a structure. Uh, we need to have programs. Uh, at the border of Ethiopia and Kenya that will allow these people to come in orderly uh, as far as re refugees is concerned. We know we have porous border with, uh, with, Somalia, uh, with Somalia, which is still a problem. I've always asked for a, a, a free zone, uh, a no-go zone, where we, we guard that border and only allow people to move at a certain point on only designated place. Secondly, Dubal, uh, AU is uh, asleep, uh, just like a AOU uh, was asleep for many years. We have a headquarters in Ethiopia and surrounding people being murdered. And we're not, we're not asking Ethiopia to come on the table and address those issues of stability. So what the point is, are we going to continue being in Addis when we are surrounded by people being killed on the street? This cannot happen. And therefore, AU primarily need to take the critical role, bring this issue at United Nations, and address it from a global uh, standpoint. Right. Thank you.